The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 22nd, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in at 877-927-6648. If you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. Send me an email. Please send that off early and send it to steve at tfn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We start our day with a mixed bag. The mix goes like this. Dow's off 20. S&P is flat. NASDAQ is up 35. Russell's down 3. Some are up 57. Trannies are up 23. New York Stock Exchange off 38. The XAU's down 4 points. That's nearly a 3% move. That's obviously for, uh, directly related to the GDX. You've got gold off 28 bucks. Silver's down 41 cents. Light recruit is off 54 pennies. Natural gas, it's up... Uh, Three cents. Uh, Thirty-year Treasury is up three ticks. Print out at one seventeen fourteen. Our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside. Micro strategy a twenty-nine dollar move there. A little bit less than two percent. First Solar having another day out there up twelve percent, twenty-five bucks. We looked at that yesterday. I believe that's going to form a weekly TD nine count top by Friday. Analog devices up seventeen bucks. Uh, you've got HubSpot up fifteen, and uh, Moderna is up thirteen. That's a nine percent move for it. To the downside, the Shakers down uh, as uh, Toll Brothers up ten bucks. 7%. Southern Copper down 9 bucks, 7% there. Modine Manufacturing up 9 bucks. That's about 9% as well. Um, you got Garmin, that's down 9. Netflix is down 7 bucks. Finally, we got something that's not done. Now I was rounding to the upside. It's really like 860 and 860 and 870. It's close to $9. Anyways, we've got movers and we've got shakers out there. Let's begin our day. Where are we going to begin our day? I'm sure the question is. Is there a top in place out here? And we're going to try to answer that question or when that might take place. But let's begin by taking a look at each of the uh, the, the primary uh, cash indices or the indices out there, being the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the uh, Russell. And uh, for the uh, to top it off, we're going to take a look at the semis because today's move triggers what, folks? Well, we'll find out momentarily. But first, let's start with the uh, Dow. We take a look at the Dow. we got the equity future contract on the left-hand side. It still has its TD9 count top that is in place out there. It's got a new profile. It's got, oh, it's really no profiles from three days ago. Resistance up at 42.13. Support down at 39.424. It is a bearish structured profile. It's been hanging right at the center of that profile level. And if it closes there, now what really should take place, that TD9 count top should take us back to its oscillator and change line. That's at 39.728. The Dow Jones Cash Indice, that still has its TD9 count top, its target 39.631. The Diamonds have a TD9 count top. It's target 3396 now these are the first targets to the downside if those levels get hit and they hold the support out there well then the move to the downside could easily be over in the case of the edow well shoot it's got support at 3411 
and that's the bottom of its profile. And then you've got 3403 right now as it's oscillator and change on. TD9 count tops in place for everything inside of the Dow. So that's not what's holding the uh, short up. Let's go take a look at the, the next instrument. Oh, where did Stevie's the heck happen there? Good thing you can't see what I'm seeing out here. But let's go take a look at the, this instrument, and that is the NQ. The NQ, no top whatsoever. It's got an A to B equals CD pattern. And that's true for the NDX100. That's true for the Qs. That's true for the QQEW. They're all doing the same thing. The pattern that each of them have, because today can be bar number five. For most of them, it would be bar number four for the QQEW. So we're days away from a potential another another TD9 count top out there. If there were to be a bearish reversal candle at any point in time, that's the daily chart we're looking at, that would then confirm sell the D point patterns for the NQ. So the NQ not likely, uh, well, the markets are not likely to top without the NQ participating in that. And at this stage of the game, what we're watching for is a daily bearish a reversal candle. We don't have that as we speak right now. Let's move over and take a look at the next instrument. I think that's the S&P 500. Here you do have a TD9 count top. So for the S&P, the actual number that price needs to close above and negate that is 53.2549. Close above that, then it's going to be back to its A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. That would be needed to form a top, and that would require a bearish reversal candle. Same is true for the ES Mini. The level it needs to close above to negate. Its top is at 53.49 level. And the SPY, the number to be watching, would be 531.52. We're at 531.33 right now. And the RSP, that's got a ways to go before it would take out its TD9 account top. But the number there is up at the 168.39 level. So all the instruments in the S&P 500, all the instruments inside the Dow Equity Future contract have tops in place. But the Russell 2000, a whole different story. Although it is trading down three bucks, what's that mean, Jelly Bean? It doesn't mean diddly as we speak right now. That needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. All price is doing is it's getting back into its gap. This is the gap on the Russell 2000. This is the cash industry that formed out here. And the high of that gap is at 2088.40. So far, the low of the session is 2090. If we take a look at the Russell 2000 equity future contract, just trading with inside its profile, no topping pattern here. It does have oscillator and change line support at the 2090 level. In the, uh, do, in the uh, IWM, it's got support right now. So if this is a counter trend move inside the IWM, much like the Russell 2000 daily equity future contract, price would find support at the center. So this is a well, I take that back. Inside the Russell 2000, the equity future contract, that profile formed with price inside it. So forget what I just said there. With regard to the IWM, that's not the case. Price was trading above the top of its profile. And so a counter trend move there would find or should find support at 206.17 out there. So no tops in place for any of the Russell instruments. They need bearish reversal candles to confirm a top. And finally, let's go check in on what I think is the culprit out here that's holding the markets up that we should be paying attention to. And that is not the SMHs, but it's the Semiconductor Index. They have two different sets of instruments inside there. Similar, but not the same. And today's move higher inside the socks. well, it's generating bar number eight of a TD9 count. A TD9 count pattern will complete or confirm tomorrow as long as price closes above of 498302. And then we've got to take a look at the weekly chart out here. You've got a TD9 count top that is still in place. Roads with the indicator top on the monthly. So if the market is going to top, it is likely to take place between today and Friday based upon the uh, patterns inside the semiconductor index chart. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? 
one simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, folks, we're going to uh, start. Let me see which charts am I on. Yeah, we're going to start the day where we left off yesterday. We had a call from uh, Mark in Fort Collins. He was looking for an entry point in COPX, which are the charts that we've got up on the screen. We just had maybe about a minute or so really to speak about it. And so I wanted to just simply, even though he hasn't called in, uh, I wanted to talk about that uh, first. First, we can see that this is falling out of bed. But I want to do before we do this, before we get into its charts out there. I know Mark knows this, but I just want everybody else to take a look at it because it's going to explain why we're going to really look at uh, both sets of charts out here. You don't know what those both sets of charts are, or do you? Those both sets of charts would be high-grade copper as well. And so here what I've thrown up here is the uh, three-day correlation between high-grade copper and COPX. So it's important for us to take a look at both. If one is bottoming, uh, the other should be bottoming too. And if they don't, then we really don't have any kind of confirmation based upon this directional correlation out there. So now, let's go back to the uh, uh, white background charts that we had discussed yesterday. I think we were taking a look at it in that very brief time that yesterday was not the day. That uh, yesterday was likely going to go ahead and confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator top. It did. It formed a bear sash candle. And now we've got price that has actually tested a new support level. And that's the daily profile that just formed today, Mark. So this is a little bit more information and more helpful for both you and I. And pr this is a bullish structured profile. And price is trading into that zone. Now, the zone is 48.54 to 49.51. If price were to close below 48.54, your buy entry point into this is going to be more likely down around the 46.34 level. If we take a look at that weekly time frame chart, there's certainly an A to B equals CD pattern. We could be getting a sell the D point pattern for its weekly time frame. We won't know till Friday, but as we speak right now, we've got that candle. The only way that candle doesn't form is if price closes probably above 50.12 or so. We're looking for the halfway point than last week's scandal. So, that, folks, that was just a ballpark guesstimation out there. You can do the math on that and figure out where that halfway point is. And the monthly time frame chart looks good. So that's what we have. Now, if 
COPX were going to form a bottom, we'd see it on an intraday chart as prices are getting back into that buy zone out there. As we look to the 30-minute time frame, we don't have such a pattern out there. In fact, it's suggesting a target of potentially 47.74. Let's dial down even a little bit smaller time frame, such as a 15 out here. What do we see for the 15-minute time frame? We don't see any kind of a bottom signal out there. One last time frame to take a look at is 65. Uh, 65 minutes is equally divisible into our 390 minute day. Now, in this case here, the 65 minute time frame chart could form a TD9 count uh, bottom. Now, what we need here, let's see that low, 4872. We haven't gotten down 487. So you've got to see price tick below 4872. This last bar, this bar that we're in right now, closes at 1140. That's bar number eight. So just add 65 minutes. Mark, I'd, I'd follow the 65-minute time frame chart. I'd be watching to see if there's any kind of a TD9 count bottom that actually does form out here as price is getting into that. Uh, well, it's already in the buy zone on that daily time frame. But that's what COPX is telling us, that there's a potential for its 65-minute time frame to generate a bottom signal while price is getting back into this buy zone. But if that's going to happen, then we should see some kind of bottom inside of copper. So let's go take a look at the copper charts, high-grade copper. Give me a moment. We'll get out there. Here we go. So these are going to pop up. Now we're going to get our multi time frames out there. By the way, the monthly chart is just simply bullish. But the weekly chart, similar to what we took a look at in COPX, it may form a, TD, a uh, dark cloud cover candle this uh, this uh, this week, and that would certainly form a sell the D point pattern. And then that would suggest that copper should pull back to the 453 level. So, Mark, the, the point that I'm really making here is if we get weekly um, confirmed sell the D point tops, maybe what we're going to see is a further pullback uh, than even the bottom of that bullish structure daily profile inside of COPX. Here, if we take a look at the daily time frame, the daily time frame has a TD9 count top. And we didn't get to this yesterday. I wish we had. But we can see that there's a TD9 count top that completed out here. Let me get my cursor. It was on bar number eight that uh, was the actual high of that pattern out there. And so what copper had to do in order to get to its true bullish ways out there is close back above that high at the 512 level, 5.128 to be exact. Now we've got price below its uh, green oscillator and change line. That suggests that we should see a further pullback. It tells us that momentum has waned out here and price could now in the case of high grade copper mark the area of support would be the top of its profile at 463 so knowing the directional correlation between those two instruments i would focus my eyes on the high grade copper charts so let's continue to focus our eyes here what do we see on a 30 minute time frame we see that a td we see wave number seven signal we also see that we're in bar number eight uh this says a, a td nine count bottom could form or should form, let's see, that's 1130, by 1230 today. So by 1230 today, you should see high-grade copper begin to move to the upside. It's going to form this TD, it's likely going to form this TD9 count bottom pattern on the 30-minute time frame. But if price continues and negates that signal, that tells you about a strong momentum move to the downside. And that certainly is a possibility when we take a look at the longer-term charts. When I say longer, I'm only referring to a 60-minute time frame chart. That shows just simply a bunch of series of lower lows out there. Uh, the 120-minute time frame chart in bar number seven is about to take out a TD9 count breakout level at 484. That suggests it wants to get down to 476. We're below profile support on the four-hour time frame chart. The same for the five-hour time frame chart. These are all suggesting a move back towards that 460 level. But keep your eyes on the 30-minute uh, time frame chart, that's one that has the potential for a bottom signal. Now, that could just lead to a counter trend rally, and that counter trend rally should leave up to 490. So, again, my suggestion uh, out to a mark or anybody who might want be interested in trading COPX is keep your eyes focused on the intraday charts for high-grade copper. Look for a bottom pattern there. If you do get one, then you could consider firing away. Let's go take a look at the GDX for Mimi out there. Uh, so if you give me a moment, we'll get back. Let me just close out these charts here. And then I'm not sure where this is going to land us. But I'm just trying to free up some resources out here. So we'll just take a moment. The charts we want to go take a look at are not going to pop up on our screen. Of course, that's gold, silver, and the GDX. It's sort of out there. But I want to just actually move over to the actual three time frame charts out there, make it a little bit clearer for both Mimi and for everyone that's watching in. So here we're going to get the daily, weekly, and monthly time frame chart. The daily chart is, at this point in time, confirming a uh, Rhodes Mintum indicator top. 
and prices below that green asset earn change line. So that suggests to us that the GDX is likely to pull back. I say it's likely to pull back. And the reason I say likely, anything can happen. But if we take a look at the strong movement in gold, we didn't take a look at uh, gold yet, I don't believe, gold or silver, uh, but we will. And here we can see that this is going to be bar number two to the downside of consecutive moves lower. We can see that, that the bar number two, two day moves to the downside inside of the GDX ever since of the uh, the low, ever since of the low. Wow, Stevie is just an amazing grammar person. In any event out there, I have total control of grammar, don't I? Uh, Kelsey grammar, that is. They say I look a lot like him. I think it's that receding forehead. In any event. Uh, what we can see out here is uh, that two to three days is basically, if we're going to maintain that bullish market out there, you could actually get a bottom, not a pattern-wise, although this is a pattern that we're taking a look at, inside of the GDX. So short of that, Mimi, we should see the GDX continue to pull back, and its target could be 3430, which is the top of its daily profile. The weekly time frame, I'm sure there's an A to B equal CD pattern on the upside. I say I'm sure there is, but I actually don't see it on the weekly time frame out there. Yeah, no, I don't see the A to B equals CD, not at least one that hasn't going to generate a sell the B point pattern. So we'll come back and take a look at the GDX. We'll finish that off. Then we're going to go take a look at the XLF for Nicholas. Natural gas for YOY, Microsoft for Nancy, Pearls. We're going to look at silver and for Dan, fuel cell. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side-by-side -side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side-by-side -side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. 
They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Folks, I got gold down 33, silver's off 55. We're taking a look at the GDX out here. And Mimi's question was, should she hold? And you know what? I don't know the answer to that question, Mimi, is where you got in, what your uh, perspective is, what your long-term horizon is, and so forth. So, for example, on the weekly time frame chart, we just touched on it briefly. There is no topping pattern that I see out here. Yeah, there's a bearish candle as we speak right now. But to Stevie, that doesn't mean a whole lot. It offers support or resistance levels, but it doesn't complete a pattern. That's when a bullish and bearish reverse candles have the most meaning at least as far as i am concerned and on a monthly time frame chart yes we've gotten back to a prior high out here but i still don't see a topping signal in fact can we take a look at the prior swing point on a monthly basis just for the heck of it 476 million shares by the way what i'm referring to let me get my crosshair out here that's the month of may of 2023 how about that we're in may of 2024 now the volume out there 476 million shares. Last month, we were into it with 689 million shares. That said that we were pushing higher. We should at least test that swing point high. That's been accomplished. This month so far, and it's the 22nd, 342 million, 342 going into 476. The average weekly volume out here is um, 100 million shares. So we still have, what, um, about a week to go? No, we're closed on Monday out there. It's a 20. I think we got about a week worth of trading. So let's say you could have another 100 million on top, more than 100 million, 340, 440, 450 or so. So price is moving into that swing point still with volume out there, Mimi. So longer term, I think this is suggesting that the GDX still wants to run higher. But that doesn't mean we won't get a pullback and that pullback getting back to 3374, 3430 out there. If you watch the 65 minute time frame chart, that is suggesting lower price. The reason I say that, a TD9 count top, price below its bullish structured profile, price below its breakout level of 36 bucks, and that suggests 3481 is a very likely possibility. And again, on the daily time frame, we were looking at about 3430 out there. So that seems like the likely outcome for the GDX, but we do have that two day pullback. And that uh, we're in a bull market out there. So, you know, maybe what you do is you stay in a position. Again, it depends on what your long term horizon was. But if it's short term, maybe uh, stay in that position today, knowing that two day bar that we could see a rally and you have a stop that is below today's low. So that's my thoughts. Mimi, hope that helps you out. As always, thanks so much for writing in. Nicholas. Uh, wrote in about the XLF yesterday. And Nicholas, I apologize. I forget your specific question out there. And I didn't write it in. But here's what I can share with you about the XLF. And that is this. It formed a TD9 count top four days ago. And since then, we've seen price pull back and test and reject that green oscillator and change line. What that tells us, Nicholas, and I think you were looking more to the short side. Right now, yes, you've got a daily top. But really, the signal or the overall message to the market is neutral. And it's neutral because we have a rising price oscillator above zero. And I don't care how you slice it. Those are bullish conditions. Those are bullish market conditions. Doesn't mean price can't pull back, but price has pulled back to test support. And so far in the XLF, that has held. And if we take a look at this is kind of an example of really the S&P and other uh, markets that we took a look or I had mentioned, I guess, at some point in time during the show today, is that last week, what happened inside the XLF is it negated a uh, and they gave it a sell the D point pattern. And so from a longer term standpoint, we're talking a weekly here, this is suggesting that it wants to move higher. The confirmation of that will come at the end of the month. And what I mean by that is if we see an XLF close above 42.22, it negates the monthly Rosemont indicator top. So right now the daily's holding well, if we do get a close below that oscillator and change line, then you could see move to 41.75 to 41.50. That is a bullish structured profile. Price would have to close below 41.50 to suggest to you or I that there's something really wrong inside of the XLF. So I hope that helps you out, Nicholas. And as always, thanks so much for writing in. Uh, let me see here. We do have a caller. It is Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing quite well, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. I'm doing really doing great. Ever since I had my cortisone shot two weeks ago, and, and I, I held off on, on on that for months. I never should have held off on that. 
I cannot believe how good it is that my back is feeling. It doesn't mean I don't have a little bit of pain, but I think that's more of a mental thing because it's so used to pain every time I moved out there. So, uh, Brent, I'm doing great. And sorry for that long, you know, I, I know you wanted to take no, a look at EVLV out there, but uh, I am doing good. Thanks for asking. No, I'm happy to hear that. That's, that's great news, Steve. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you want to take a look at Evolve Technology Holdings out there. Uh, tell us what you're doing and how I can help you out. I haven't taken a position, and the reason I haven't done that, Steve, is just looking at the weekly chart. If I take the it's uh, August uh, high of around 8.50, yeah. I'm considering that the A point, and I go down to, looks like in November of that same year, is the B point. Yeah. Uh, C point would be in Ooh. like yeah. February or March of 2024. It says and you're going that, out of business. Uh, swing point, <laughs> that B point was taken out with volume. Big volume. So, yeah. So, I, to me, in my mind, if I'm using the proper discipline, that, that should, and it's confirmed AB equals CD, that that should finish off at some point. Yeah, I just minus wanted to $5. Get your thoughts on where that would take it to, and if there's something down there that makes sense to try to buy it there. Yeah, well, that the perfect uh, perfect explanation for everybody out there with regard to how an A to B equals CD pattern is formed. And you can see out here visually, folks, we're looking at that weekly chart. You can see Brent chose the uh, swing point high from back in August, and then that swing point low from November, and then you had that nice rally into a high back here in February. And that uh, last two weeks ago, the volume on that candle was 18 million shares, taking out that swing point that had 8 million shares. So I'd say that's pretty good volume out there. The problem is that A to B equals CD pattern would get us down to a minus 503. So it would be it'd be out of business, basically, if we were to do that. So so that's not so. Yes, it's got a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern, but we know that that's not likely. And so we've got to try to investigate what else might be happening here. What price did do was it did get back to a breakout level. It was not the first breakout level, which was 280 on the weekly chart, but it was at 211. That was a, that was a breakout. So it's possible. And when we get back, when price gets back to a breakout level, folks, doesn't matter whether it's a TD nine count breakout or a bottom of a profile or some other level of support that you've identified out there, that in fact can be a bottom pattern. So you want to be paying attention to that. So that's what I see on the weekly chart. Before I switch over to daily and monthly and anything else to take a look at, it does, do, any questions about the weekly chart that I'm showing? No, that's fine, Steve. Thank you. Okay. So now let's switch over and take a look at what's going on in a daily chart. Again, you've got that big – well, you've got an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside here. That's going to be different. Um, so let's go take a look at oh, – first, first, let's, let's discuss what it's actually doing right now. Ever since that drop to the downside back on May the 10th, it was actually on May the 14th that uh, a new bullish structured profile had formed. Now what price has been able to do, Brett, is run all the way up to resistance. It did that yesterday at 307, and since then it's backing off. So we'll pick up this conversation, take a look at the daily time frame chart for EBLV as soon as we get back to this room. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member. Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Thank goodness for Wingman, because I stand corrected out there, Brent. Uh, EVLV on its weekly time frame, the A to B equals CD pattern, will get us down to 71 cents out there. So my apology. Uh, that's where that would take us to. And that's a possibility with regard to where price is going. But as we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, and this is a small A to B equals CD, so it's not the same A to B equals CD pattern that we're looking at on the weekly time frame. We've already covered that. But as we can see in this leg here, that form, uh, this gives us a A to B equals CD pattern after a TD9 count top that formed out here on April the 2nd. And this is made more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. We were taking a look at that daily time frame, that bullish structured profile out there. And we did get a bull sash candle out here on May 14th. That confirmed that pattern. Now, that pattern has taken us up to that resistance level at the top of the daily profile. What you'd love to see here is if price closes today, Back below its red oscillator and change line, maybe it's not today, maybe it's tomorrow, and that's currently at 288. Then that would suggest to us that price should pull back to its buy zone on the daily time frame. And that'd be between 222 and 243 out there. Short of that, and that's that's taken into consideration that the weekly may have found support in that 211 area out there. In the case of the monthly time frame chart, the monthly time frame chart is trading into its all-time swing point low. And that had volume of 34 million shares. And the month for that, give me a moment, that was the month of uh, March of 2022. So there was a total volume again of 34 million shares this month so far. We are into it with 39 million shares. So you're pushing lower with volume out there. And that would suggest that that low should be tested. And that low of March of 2022 is a buck 57. So I'd have to call, go with right now, you've got a daily buy the D point pattern only if price were to close above 307, would that change what I'm about to say, which I think is more likely that price will get down to test that low of the March 2022 level out there. Now, if it closes below that, Brent, then that A to B equals CD pattern that you pointed out to us, it's got a uh, completion or one-to-one -one price objective of 71 cents would be the likely outcome. Does that start to fit more into what you were looking at as opposed to my first uh, suggestion, which was uh, it would get down to a minus 503? <laughs> yes, uh, when I had done the figure it out myself, it was around that number that you gave. I thought it was more around a dollar, like 90 cents, but that's that's okay. in the range I thought it would be something like that. I didn't get the exact numbers, but and it would be around you know, a little bit less than a dollar uh, if it were to complete a one-to-one. -one. 
I just, for me personally, I'm going to try to be patient. I, I like the company. I, I ended okay. up finding this oh, a while ago, and it's, they do have a technology that's kind of unique, and they're in the uh, – it's metal detection, but they have a – the uh, particular technology they have is can distinguish much better if it's a oh, weapon okay. that doesn't – this is not going to just pick up on some piece of metal and send the thing off on, you know, uh, you know unnecessarily. Sure. So. And then you can also, instead of having to go through individually, you can send through a group of people and it'll pick up, you know, each one of those. I guess it's just, I don't know all about it, but that's generally what, what sure. their technology is. Okay, so it sounds cool. I can see there, you know, in the environment we're in with, the, of course, a lot of these school shootings and just, you know, going into big stadiums and going into, you know, I mean, all kinds of different types of environments that I can see it could be used. So I, sure, I think sure, it uh, sure. has has some merit. I'm going to look into it more. I'm going to just keep watching the thing. and uh, I'd like to try to get it lower if I can. Yeah, well, I think the monthly chart is saying, you know, it's trading at that swing point, so it wants to at least test the bottom of that. As I pull the monthly chart back on my other screen, I can see that actually it's all-time low. It takes us back to February of 2009, and that was at about 18 cents. So um, I, I, I like, I, I, you know, I'd watch, I'd watch to see what happens should it test and reject that swing point from March of 2022 out there. But um, that's what I see right now. If price were to close above 307, it might be generating a different message for us, at least for the short term. All righty. Yeah, thank you so much, Steve, for going through all that, all the different charts, different time frames, and all the different numbers as well. So my pleasure. so much. Just have, have yourself a great day and have yourself a great week as well. Will do. You too. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Uh, let's move on to natural gas. Why a why in the tiger stem? Wanted to take a look at the daily and the weekly charts out there for natural gas, which I'm happy to do and we're going to do. But why a why? I would tell you that the monthly chart is the one that's the most important. And take a look at natural gas. Why would Stevie say that? Well, because right now, price, we have not seen natural gas trade above an oscillator and change line since November of 2022. 2020-22, how about that? We just added a couple more digits to our years out there. So, a, and right now price is testing that level. So if natural gas is forming some kind of major bottom out there, then what we're gonna see out here, and that's gonna be really important to be paying attention to, is we're gonna see a close. We're trading above right now. Where we're trading right now is not the end of the month. And that would be at $2.94 is what we'll call it. It says 2.938, but we'll call it 294. And if price closed above that on a monthly basis out there, YOY, that tells us that natural gas should continue to have legs to the upside. Price is also, so what's the next resistance point out here? Well, on the weekly time frame, what we'd have to take a look at is that January 12th swing point. 125,000 shares on that week. Natural gas so far for the week and yeah, is 400,000 shares, but I, I really need to take a look at, I'm not sure how the volume, but right now it's showing that we're, we're moving in that swing point with volume. So the question is, does the monthly oscillator and change line hold? And I don't know the answer to that. If it doesn't hold, then we should get up there and at least test that high. That high, by the way, being $3.02. We don't see any kind of a topping signal on the uh, daily time frame. It negated a TD9 count right out of the chute out there. There wasn't even a hiccup. Tells us about a strong moment to move to the upside, and that's what we're seeing. So I would be paying more attention to the monthly time frame chart than anything else, at least at this moment in time. So why, oh, why? That's the reason why, because we haven't seen price close above an oscillator and change line in quite some time out there. Let's go and take a look at Microsoft. This is for Nancy inside the Tiger's Den. Microsoft, I don't you you've got some calls you said out there. Yesterday price negated a TD9 count top. That's a beautiful thing. It did that just after three took three sessions to do that. Strong momentum move to the upside. However, Price is running right up into the sellers. And the sellers out here are up at 430.82. And we're at 430.52 out there. I didn't write down when when your call position expires. You just got to know that you're up against weekly and monthly sellers, both at basically the same level. Those are the top of the profile. So the daily looks good. And the daily's not an issue. But you've got a timing type issue out there. You say you're in the green. Um, you know, what's going on in the short-term time frame? So that's a good question. I don't know if I know the answer to that, but let's go see what we can find out here. I don't see anything on a 30-minute basis that would cause you a whole lot of concern. 
Uh, price might pull back to 429 out there. Let's take one more chance, look at a 65 minute chart, see if we've got anything out here. We've got a Rosemont Dominicator top that has uh, formed. So you could easily see a pullback to 424 or 426. So knowing that you're up against that weekly and monthly resistance level, again, I don't recall when your options expire out there, but uh, you know, you, you may have, you know, might be worth considering closing that position out. So I hope that helps you out. Pearls wanted to take a look at silver. So let's get down to silver, boy. We don't I'm going to talk through at least as many seconds of the breakout there, Al. I've got the clock on, but let's see if we get the silver out here. Silver likely forming a Rogemintum indicator top today. But my apology, it's way down lower. Oh, silver. Here comes the silver charts. So the daily time frame, you got a bearish engulfing candle. Silver should pull back to $30.46. We'll finish taking a look at silver when we get back from this break. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. All righty, so we take a look at silvers out here, pearls. Look, the monthly chart is very bullish. The weekly chart is very bullish. It took out a TD9 count top. It's trading up a profile. The daily time frame says it's time out. We're going to get a, uh, looks like we'll get a bearish engulfing candle. That suggests an erodes momentum indicator top. That suggests a pull back to the 3046 level. If price were to close below that, 2864 would be open and 2665. On uh, the intraday charts out here, I don't see any signals of a uh, bottom or anything like that. So a further move lower is likely. Again, 3046 being that target to the downside. Let's go take a look at fuel cell, FCEL for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. See where this thing might be headed to. 
uh, FCEL on a daily time frame. It's running right up in the resistance stand. That's the top of its daily profile. That's at 94 cents. You do have a roads momentum indicator bottom. If price can take out 94 cents, it might actually be setting up an A to B equals CD pattern. We won't know unless price closes above buck two. 129 million uh, shares traded on that uh, day on that swing point, and you've done 52 million today. So you've got the volume, but first thing, price got to take out resistance at 94 cents out there. If it does that, Likely, this goes on to form an A to B equal CD pattern on the upside. A buck sixteen, I would say, would be its likely price target. I'm doing this fast, folks, because we just have about a minute left out here. Amazon for G-Man. Amazon is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom as long as price closes below uh, 183.63. We're trading just above that right now. So watch that 183.63 level. If it closes above that, then we don't have any kind of a TD9 count pattern. Um, we don't have any kind of a pattern really to speak of. Maybe an A to B equals CD. Let me see if that's possible. Oh, geez, I grabbed the wrong tool. Sorry about that. Um, it is what it is. Let's just move this over, see if there's any. No, so there's no chance of a completion of an A to B equals CD. So watch that close today. That could then be signaling the bottom. That would take us up to the 186.17, 188.43, 188.69 level. Uh, let's turn over and take a quick peek. What's the next one up here? It is AMD. AMD has got a roads momentum indicator bottom pattern, price trading with inside a new profile. You've got resistance, which was tested this morning. That was at 169.72. Support is in the zone of 161.34 to 163.44 out there. Tomorrow, we'll have to take a look at NVIDIA. Let me put that chart up on the screen right now real quickly out here. I don't see a top on the daily time frame for NVIDIA. We'll be, and folks, hey, look, have a wonderful Wednesday. I'll see you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Take care.